tikina tikina tūra ngā kākono ngā pihi ngā mahuri. Pi tiki ona tai au, ona tai au ora, ona tai au tipu. Kia tipu tō tika, kia tipu whakahihi, kia tipu ki te pai au ki te au mārama. Ngā pūtake ki a papatua nuku, ngā wawata ki a rangi nui. Tēnei te mauri ka whakatata, tēnei te wānanga ka whakakake. Tēnei te ia ka whakamaua, kia whakaputaina ki te pai au, ki te mārama tanga tai a hoa ho, haumi e, hui e, tai ki e. Um, again, um, it's my pleasure just to open us up for the day and land you and welcome you into our shared space today. Again, um, so if this is your first time here, no my welcome to our shared space. And if you have been here before, no my hoki mai. Again, the whole um, outcome or the whole perspective of um, for this time, short time that we have together is just for an opportunity to allow us to connect with like-minded people um with all the work that we do um so in saying that if you haven't done already again just to have a quick round of whanaungatanga and connect us in if you haven't already if you could pop into chat um where you hail from within Aotearoa and your role as well um and with that being said what I'm going to do is I'm going to hand our uh, um sorry <laughs> Um, just as a reminder, as we're kicking off into our space before I actually hand that up over to the brother Baruch. When we first started our journey earlier this year, we had the beautiful uh, Roy Mata, um, who set us off for the year for our foundation series through Hotu Waka and given us some ma um, magnificent tools to help us, or high level tools in terms of how to help us navigate the complexity and the works that we often find ourselves in. Um, borrowing from our Hotu Waka, we then also had the lovely Fire Debbie join us um, that helped us sharing and helping us delve into the complexities of what it looks like, not just focusing on co-design, but the stuff before, in between and after, and all the relationships that that entails as well. I'm um, carrying on from the awesome learning and the sharing that we have together in the space. Um, we have the um, lovely um, Dickie that will be joining us today but I'll hand that ako over now to our lovely Baruch to introduce him and give us a bit more information of what we, what's in front of us. Kia ora, Baruch. Ah, kia ora, dona, ngā mihi nui nui. Uh, kia koe. thank you for that lovely grounding, thank you for your karakia, and thank you for the lovely grounding in this space. Um, warm welcome to all of you here today. For those of you who uh, haven't actually met, uh, ko Baruch Jacob tōko ingoa, no ini ahau, uh, ko tangata tiriti ahau. Um, e noho ana ahau ki uh, Tamaki Makaurau, e mahi ana ahau ki uh, the Auckland Co-Design Lab. So I'm Baruch, I'm from India, uh, Tangata Tiriti here in um, Aotearoa, New Zealand, and working currently with um, Auckland Co-Design Lab. So this group that some of you, most of you, I think, well, I see a lot of very familiar faces and names, so really warm welcome, welcome back. Uh, for those of you who haven't been here before, who, who want to be reminded about it, this is uh, basically a public sector community of practice. And it's while well, we host it, it's not about, well, the Auckland Code Design Lab hosts it, it's about, it's a collaborative space. It's about space for people from all over public sector and the edges of the public sector into some of the private sector-ish spaces to come and have a conversation. And it's super conversational. These spaces are conversational. It's about peer learning as much as it is from having conversations with the speakers. And the thing that does bring us together is a shared interest in promoting and prioritizing ethical, sort of fine house centered led design and innovation. And we're super interested in well-being, design, decision-making and leadership and sort of a well-being led um, design and leadership is what we're really interested in. So for just before I hand over to get so the way today's uh, session will run is We'll have a little bit of, we'll hear a little bit from Dickie. We'll take a bit of, uh, we will be doing breakout rooms. So please, as much as you po as possible, stay on. If you're on the call, try and stay on. I understand some people need to get the bite. But if you absolutely can stay on, so you're able to continue to connect with your with your peers. So we'll be starting with uh, Dickie. He'll give us a bit of, um, tell us, give us a bit of a hint about what he's going to be talking about. Though. And then we'll break out into, we're going to break out rooms and have a bit of whakawhanaungatanga. And once we come back, Dickie will sort of go into the 
meat of what he's going to talk about. And then um, we'll have another chance to break it out and have conversation in small groups. So this is being recorded. Um, however, it will only be the main room that is being recorded and mostly the part that Dickie speaks. So um, the parts where people are sharing, we'll try and we're going to we'll remove it from the recording later, basically. And that's to make sure we give you a space that you're, you feel quite free to speak your mind, speak your heart. It's not going to live on the internet forever. I mean, Dickie's a lost cause, so that's fine. And everyone knows what he's going to say anyway, so nah, Jackson. So it doesn't matter that he stays on, but for the rest of you, I can assure you that we will not be uh, holding your quarter in this space. So please feel free to be quite open and generous with each other. And it is my absolute pleasure to introduce Dickie Humphreys. Um, I think the first time I really kind of got to know about Dickie is like, this is amazing guy is working in Mangere. It's just amazing stuff. And it's like, oh yeah, no, I should meet him. But I was mostly based out west at the time. So I didn't get very much of a chance. And then the Kanini Library happened. And there's sort of, some of you will know about the three carings and the, uh, the five minimums work that the CSI, the TSI have been doing. We're doing around what do far now need from a public space. And then I heard that Takanini Library had not only implemented quote that, quote unquote that, uh, but also it had actually exceeded. It had made it not just a five minimums, but like a beautiful space that could really respond to community, could really respond to Mana Fenua in a meaningful way. And Dickie's name came up again. So it's with absolute pleasure I bring in Dickie today. His, um, talking, he's going to be giving us a bit of a challenge today, and we're talking about systems, and we're talking about our role in the systems, but without giving any more, too many more hints or spoilers, I'll hand it over to Dickie. Kia ora, Dickie. Kia ora. Uh, kia ora na koutou katoa toa, e tai putu putu maera ki tou katoa nei putu putu anga e tei uh, popongi nei. Um, tēnei te mihi ki a koe tona no tō uh, kalakia whakatufira i a tātou, um, tēnei ata. He mihi ana ki a koe Baruk, no tērā um, kōrero mahanhana e ki au nei. Um, ko Jackie Humphreys tō ki ngoa, uh, no roto mai te moana nui a kiwa um, o ku uh, akapapa anga, whakapapa, um, e wānga au no uh, ngā kokutangita ko tiltini, pera katoa ko te ditumu inua, um, i roto e ngā ngāti ko um, ngā tinura o pera katoa ko te akatawira. Um, Hi. Hi, everyone. Are we, are we excited? This is good, eh? So um, just very briefly, yes, okay, acknowledgements to uh, Donna for beautiful um, opening uh, there and grounding for us in Karakia Baruch for your kind and warm words. Um, and um, and just a, a brief um, akapapa anga, a brief akapapa um, introduction for me hailing from um, the islands of, or the islands in the Pacific, um, in Timoana Nui Akiva, in particular, um, a little uh, emerald there in the in the blue sea called uh, Mitiaro Nukuro, um, through the extended clans of Tuteni and Tumu Inua, um, through the two ngati of um, Nuro and Akatoira. So hey, so we've got a little bit of a you know little couple of minutes here to kind of get warmed up before we um, throw you into um, some smaller groups to. Uh, build relationships to kind of um, start forming some some threads there on on the corridor that we've got today um, and you know so later on I will kind of get into some of the meteor bits um, but ultimately just for this 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 initial part here um, you know there was a nice recap there that Donna gave us around um, the two sessions that have happened before already, Hotu Waka, um, and the last one, which was, you know, the, the before and after the co-design, you know, remaining in relationship, the importance of trust. And ultimately, you know, we are all here because we're in some sort of system change, <laughs> desystem, that's a new word, let's go with that, desystem. <laughs> um, it's a nice kind of, um, marriage of what we're all trying to do, which is, you know, some in some way in our mahi, we're trying to influence, change, flip, um, shift uh, the systems that we are in 
and or the systems that um, our Fano uh, Fano, our Hapuri Fano, um, across the motu, uh, engaging with, disengaging with uh, recipients of uh, contributors to, um, and and a lot of our. Uh, whenever we kind of talk about this stuff, we're kind of like, you know, trying to figure it out. It's almost like, um, you know, mechanics under the hood, you know, like, well, if we tap this thing, if we loosen this screw, if I uh, try, try to rearrange this pipe this way, would the system operate differently? Um, and, and often our conversations can be about what can we do to the system or what can we, you know, what from as, as if we are not ourselves in and of the system. And so our, um, our conversation later will be about, um, you know, what is our intrapersonal journey, our intrapersonal change, our intrapersonal um, challenges when, when undertaking that mahi. But it is kind of, it is good though, to begin with, um, with the system itself and what we, what we have experienced in trying to create change and trying to create shifts. So the, if you consider that then, um, in our mahi, if you reflect on your mahi, um, you'll find that, you know, there's always soft points in the systems, like, oh, here's some influence, or here's something, you know, here's a part of the system that is open to change, or isn't so restrictive, or um, is, um, you know, prototyping really flourishes in this part of the system. And um, Baruch mentioned Takanani. So, you know, what we found was that, you know, our mental model was like, oh, we can't muck around with the position descriptions, um, you know, as a, as a, a gospel truth from, from, um, from HR. But after having conversations with, our, um, with, with HR, we found that actually there's quite an opportunity there for change. And that's an aspect of the system. So the question then, um, you know, that's just a, you know, that's just an example. It could be policy, it could be team culture, it could be um, how we design, how we project plan, how we evaluate um, all these different parts of the system. Um, some parts of it will be more up for shifts um, and some will be more resistant. Um, so the question then that we want to put to you is the kind of a whanaungatanga question, something for you to hold on to as you kind of get to know each other and share a little bit about your mahi and your breakout groups, is if you reflect then on your mahi, where, where in the system, where in your system um, is its starting point for change? Right, because it's not always this kind of big... Um, wall you know it's not always kind of big brick wall where you're kind of wondering oh my gosh how do i how do i where do i even chip away at this there will be for you in your experience places where change in the system the system likes to start at this point maybe it likes to start on the edge maybe it likes to start in teams maybe it likes to start in policy settings so that's the consideration for your question as you go into your whanaungatanga groups um so there'll be a little bit in there around, uh, uh, yes, where does the system you are in like to start change? There's the succinct question that we agreed on earlier. <laughs> but you would get there eventually. So yes, yeah, so I'll pass back to uh, Baruch to kind of uh, set up the next part. Okay, Kerana folks. Um, so we'll be going into breakout rooms. Lee will be putting us in breakout rooms in a minute. Um, so please introduce yourself and where you're from but also have, see if we can have a bit of a conversation about the question, which is where does the system you are in like to start change? And we'll see in about 10 minutes. Um, well, I kind of like, I feel like I'm already in a, in a flow. So when everyone was in their breakout groups, we had our, our one, me and um, Baruch and, um, and Donna. Um, and so, yeah, so there's definitely a kind of a, a flow of consciousness, which, which is happening right now. So we'll just go with, we'll, we'll go with that. But I do mahi to all the, um, the commentary that's coming through um, and the conversations that you've had. Um, if we cast our minds back, for those of us that were there, um, to the first session, which was uh, Roy Mata um, presenting Hautu Waka, one of the first, or the first step is attunement. Um, and in that, um, 
its focus is, uh, you know, attunement into what's around us, attunement into our environment, indeed attunement into the system. Um, and um, I just want to spend um, a little 30 second exercise with us all to kind of enter into attunement, um, where the focus is attunement into self. Um, and, that, and that's the that's the balancing balancing piece. We've had our conversation about um, the system, and, I, and I, I, I suppose we would have used language that would say that that thing over there, um, the system, in a nice box. Um, now just 30 seconds to kind of attune into this thing over here, um, and then we'll join and then we'll join the conversations up um, from there. So um, to do this, um, so I've um, closed my emails because they have a have a, um, a habit of saying, "Pay attention to me." When for this moment, I want to pay attention to not my email. So I've done that. Um, my phones are on my table out of habit, but they're silent, so that's another thing. Um, my feet are flat against the floor, so if that works for you, it's a kind of a pausing stance, like I'm, I'm here, I'm present kind of stance, um, then you can do that. Um, my hands are just on the table, if that's comfortable for you, you can do that. Um, next, I want to close my eyes, um, and if that's comfortable for you, you can do that. If that's not comfortable for you, um, pick a letter on your um, on your keyboard and just stare at it. So it's just kind of a way of visually blocking out any other distractions. So you know, you could look at the number six, for example, and just rest your rest your gaze on on a key on the keyboard, or you can close your eyes. Um, then I'll talk us through a little bit of a meditation. It's not very long. It's just a kind of a, an extended pause, really. Um, and then I will end um, with a chant, a pe, um, and then that will begin the begin the corridor proper. So, if all your distractions are silenced and put away and minimised, um, um, just for the moment, um, just settle back into your chair. Make sure that you're feeling supported, um, that your feet are supported um, by the floor, that your legs are supported by your knees, that are connected to your thighs, sitting on your chair, that you can feel the back of the chair cradling the small of your back, and that as you move up, you can feel or notice um, that your spine or your back is in a comfortable position, that your neck is resting just on your shoulders. Your shoulders, you might want to give a little stretch to. And that your head is on your neck. And that your eyes are just resting. And no need for deep breaths, but just pay attention to your breath as it is coming in to your body and out. Ma tika tika. Koe koe te po keno te po ara te po tapu e tu e hey ara. And welcome back. You can flick your wrists, put some energy back in. So that um that chance. Oh, also while we're kind of still in this little relaxed phase, just kind of pay attention to what that feels like. And if it was any different to anticipating if there's an email coming or not, or if this is a nice supportive um, supportive stance. So we gave you a conversation there that would have put you in your head, you know, because it was a very technical type question and asked you to go to technical experiences. Um, and now we're moving from our head into our heart. Um, and, um, and so yes, that's 
you know, and, and, and that marks our transition into this different type of portal. The um, chant there, um, ancient Rarotongan chants, um, and the gist of it in that, those opening lines are arise and awaken. Arise and awaken! <laughs> so you might be ready for all that is to come, is the final line. That's an interpretation, because what it actually talks about is three particular poor, three particular nights in the lunar calendar. And that was used at a time when um, Te Arivananga uh, were set up, so Houses of Learning. Um, and in that particular part of the lunar calendar, um, uh, community resilience would kind of be at a, not a low point, but um, it's kind of a time for vigilance. So at that point, the Arivanangas would be disbanded um, the houses of learning would be disbanded so that all the knowledge would go out into the community around midwifery and agriculture and um, fishing and carving and oratory and um, medicine and, 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 all, and, and all the things that you could imagine being taught in the house of learning um, would go out into the community. Um, and that's kind of for one or for a couple of reasons. One is this understanding of an interconnectedness between ourselves and our environment. So we spoke about that with Hotu Waka, right? And understanding that for those particular times, the Modi and the environment would shift in such a way that we, the population, would have to bring balance to that by infusing another kind of Modi, infusing a Modi of, of, of knowledge, a Modi of resilience um, into a time when the environment's Modi was um, shifting in a such a way um, that would not be, yeah, that, that would need a, a rebalance there. So that's my kind of um, first provocation is that if we're working in systems change, what is it in my own modi? What is it in my own introspection that I need to bring forward into the modi of the environment, the modi of the system? Um, and I suppose that's a first provocation is that um, the system, that the systems, the system has modi. And modi, you know, if it's, a, if it's an unknown term, okay, to point, um, there's plenty of reflection time after this session for the rest of your life, but <laughs> it's a, what, what, that, what, what that could mean. But ultimately, when we're talking about modi, we're talking about the essence or the quality, um, the spiritual essence, the energetic quality of anything. This has a modi. I have a modi. My modi and the modi of this phone are in some sort of dynamic modi relationship with each other. Um, and I would put to you that systems also have a modi. So if we know that um, modi is dynamic, that essence, that, um, that core qualities, um, that energy is present in all things, including a system, and that they are in dynamic relationship with each other, then what is the opportunity to consciously be in a modi relationship with, with, the, with the system? So I've got a couple of slides just to kind of help break things down. Um, so I'll just take two seconds to find those. You can kind of consider why did they invite this guy? One moment. Uh, let's go with, let's go with this one. Oops, here we are. So, in the example of Takanini, which I won't go into the heaps of detail about it, but also, you know, there are lots of different places in my practice where um, uh, with teams um, and in projects, um, you know, we've uh, taken this consciously, this idea of modia to and modi mind, um, energy toward an energy from. So mai and atu, you know, if you think hariatu, hari mai, go and come, 
or if um, aroha atu, aroha mai, um, love bestowed, love received. Um, same with Modi. So Modi is not stagnant, always flowing, right? So we have consciously taken this on board and like how do we relate not just to our work and to the system, but also into our practice of, um, of reflection and, 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 and prototyping. So you'll see here in this um, diagram, you know, a very rudimentary Modi flow or flow of Modi. Um, and, um, you know, anything like a diagram, we make it more simple than, than, than reality. But um, ultimately, this is uh, what we can kind of consider is this energy flow, this essence quality flow um, from Modi Mai, which is about being, about reflection, about input, I mean, input into self. Um, and Modi Atu, which is about doing actions and outputs. Um, and that's, um, and that we actively um, join the two together so that, you know, our, our reflective practice and our practice um, are, joined, um, are joined in a Modi loop. Um, so you'll see there, you know, the different, um, the different steps um, that you might step through to move from Modi Mai into Modi Atu um, around um, taking time to reflect, to acknowledge what it what is, what we're learning from that, um, and integrating that wisdom and essence into um, the output of playing, prototyping, reflecting, um, connecting, and then back into that middle part where dreaming occurs. So, in the example of Takanini, which I won't go into the heaps of detail about it, but also you know there are lots of different places in my practice where. Um, uh, with teams um, and in projects, um, you know, we've uh, taken this consciously, this idea of modi atu and modi mai, um, energy toward and energy from. So mai and atu, you know, if you think hari atu, hari mai, go and come, or if um, aroha atu, aroha mai, um, love bestowed, love received, um, same with modi. So modi is not stagnant, always flowing, right? So we have consciously taken this on board and like how do we relate not just to our work and to the system, but also into our practice of, um, of reflection and, 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 and prototyping. So you'll see here in this um, diagram, you know, a very rudimentary Modi flow or flow of Modi. Um, and, um, you know, anything like a diagram, we make it more simple than, than, than reality, but, um, ultimately, this is uh, what we can kind of consider is this energy flow, this essence quality flow um, from Modi Mai, which is about being, about reflection, about input, I mean, input into self, um, and Modi Atu, which is about doing actions and outputs. Um, and that's um, and that we actively um, join the two together, so that you know our our reflective practice and our practice um, are joined um, are joined in a modi loop. Um, so you'll see there, you know, the different um, the different steps um, that you might step through to move from modi mai into modi atu um, around. Um, taking time to reflect, to acknowledge what it what is, what we're learning from that, um, and integrating that wisdom and essence into um, the output of playing, prototyping, reflecting, um, connecting, and then back into that middle part where dreaming occurs. So this is kind of the confronting thing though, right? That if the system has Modi and I have Modi and that they're in relationship with each other, then I kind of have this problem. This is kind of the confronting thing though, right? That if the system has Modi and I have Modi and that they're in relationship with each other, then I kind of have this problem that am I in an illusion of separation? Am I truly separate from the system that I'm trying to create change in if we are bound and in relationship through Modi? So, I've got a question there, you know, what do our cosmogenies tell us? Um, and our, our creation stories tell us, you know, our, through Moana Nui um, uh, cosmogenies and the cosmogenies of Aotearoa, um, that everything is connected, that we're in this huge interconnected web. 
um, that's, you know, that's starting in Te Paul, and then, you know, through the creation of that light and um, Rangi Whenua, um, Rangi um, Papa uh, Moana, um, and, and, you know, the children of Tane, the children of Tangaroa, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Guess who's the last one on the scene? That's us. Um, and that means that our relationship with the, with the cosmos is um, not one of domain and control, um, but is actually, um, you know, we are the tainers here. You know, we are in a, we are in a, we are in a whakapapa that means that we are the Portuguese um, to Rangitoto that I can see there. Um, that we're the Portuguese to the school of snapper that are probably swimming around there, or the whales that are further out. Um, and that, um, you know, it, it is the, it is that, it's that breaks the idea of uh, um, ego um, and, and, and our indigenous understanding of eco. So if that's true for everything else, then, you know, I would say that that is also true for the system, that we are interconnected, integrated part of the very thing we're trying to change, we're trying to change. That we are both a part of the system um, and as agents of change in it, then a, a part of the system at the same time. So what's some examples of where we're kind of um, trying to do a reset on this? So I'll just kind of come back up. Um, I want to kind of take you through this model. Um, we'll see where the corridor goes in a few different places. I'm calling them developmental stages because that's what we're using them as, um, but they've also been used as um, project management stages, uh, policy development stages, um, uh, personal reflective um, process, what have you. Uh, first acknowledgement, of course, goes to um, uh, well, Tupuna of Timon and Nui. Um, all of these concepts um, come from our various languages, um, from Aotearoa all the way up to Hawaii and everywhere else in between. Um, but a special acknowledgement to uh, Dr. Carlo Mila, um, who uh, cast the net um, and hauled in the net of this knowledge that was uh, always there. Um, to to let out Andrew, who was the first to kind of pull this together into a, um, a, in a framework, um, and to Matalena Lao Pepe, who was the, who socialised this at MB. So this has been used. So we're using it as developmental phases for our unit, but it's also been used as a policy creation tool, um, and even IT um, teams have used it as a project management tool. So first, going then to um, to pour. So if we go back to the cosmogenies again, it's not just about the, the qualities of the night, but all that was there before something started. Um, it was full of deep potential. So um, for our context, for example, we've got a new unit. Um, it's been in existence for about nine months now. Um, and this is kind of our check-in piece around how we are developing um, and growing as a, as a, as a, as a, as a unit. Um, and quite often when things are new, um, we grasp at certainty um, and we want to run straight to the last stage, which is kind of, I've got to do the project, build the thing, um, make the thing happen that I can touch and feel and feel comfortable that I've done something. Um, but if we skip ahead and out of poor, um, we lose the opportunity to be in a poor mode, to be in, a, in an essence, a quality and energy um, that is that is only found in the poor stage, which is before anything actually gets started. If this is full of deep potential. This is when we have to employ our empathic listening. This is when we have to be okay with ambiguity and, and, and expand into the expansiveness of poor. The thing with poor is like, you know, it can be a bit scary because you don't know what's out there. But the counter to that is if you don't know what's out there, potentially everything is. So it's a great um, a, a, a space of potentiality. As we move out of poor, then we move into rangi, um, or um, yeah, so we move into um, rangi or langi or rangi um, or whatever other um, um, version of um, of this elemental across uh, Timon and Nui. Um, and those are those qualities are still, you know, at that time, it's not things aren't tangible. Uh, it's still a little bit ambiguous, but um, you know, there's some uh, there's an emerging clarity. Um, now's the time to raise um, sights, um, envision, aspirations, set goals, etc. 
After being in the quality of Rangi, then we move into the quality or the type of Mori of Moana, which is fluid in its, in its essence. It is um, tangible, you can touch it, but it's still not quite the thing, right? Like you can touch the Moana, you can't hold it in your hand. Um, and so here's a good time to kind of try on new ways of thinking. Um, it's just us out there on the Moana just for now, you know, so the, the, the risks are low in terms of getting things wrong. So, you know, we can, um, we can try out new things, uh, test our thinking, um, and, and now that we've moved out of Rangi, pay attention to other tohu that might be in the environment. Eventually we get to whenua, um, think about it first landing, whenua, whanua, vanua, um, that now here's the time to start establishing foundations and prototyping um, and doing things that are um, a little bit more tangible, not necessarily the finished thing. Um, and um, and we start to arrive into a place that's got more tohu, with, you know, attuned to more opportunities that, that are in a whenua um, than may have been in a moana. And then eventually move on to kainga, which is around embedding um, the structure or embedding the project or the kaupapa um, into a self-replicating ecosystem. And I say that because of what the word kainga, um, what our ancestors tell us about what the word kainga means, right? So in the Cook Islands and here in Aotearoa, kainga is the home. Um, but in Tonga, kainga is, the, um, kainga is the district. It's a collection of villages. You know, it's a collection of, um, a collection of homes. Um, a rohe, you might say. Um, in um, Samoa, that the K gets dropped in, this is ainga. Um, and, you know, we know Ainga is the extended, um, the, you know, the, the large family um, connected group. Um, in Fiji, um, it, it speaks to the idea of nationhood, like Kaifiti, for example, you know. Um, and in Hawaii, um, Aina, which is the equivalent, is the land itself. So all these things, it's got the preference of, um, prefix of kai, which is uh, sustenance, you know, so whatever it is that the final thing is, the kainga that we're trying to build, that is self-sustaining, that that modi quality has a kainga quality to it, that it is um, self-replicating, it's replenishing, that it feeds us, that it feeds whoever, whoever whatever the kaupapa, um, the kaupapa might be. So if we take our modi aspect to um, the system in our work, then... Um, we start to kind of uh, disconnect from the illusion of separation because the illusion of separation is um, a real symptom of uh, of where all these systems have come from, right? So, you know, I'll be controversial right now and say, you know, that the organization I work for and the many that you work for too are all agents of the crown. And therefore the premise of the existence of these organizations is colonization. And while, you know, um, the kaupapa of these organizations have come a long way since 1840 and prior, there is still an institutional memory of its inception. And part of that modi, a part of that modi of that institutional memory is that we are all separate and individual. So I suppose the challenge then that I'm kind of putting out here is um, how do we dispel in ourselves that illusion of separation? Uh, what are tools from this whenua moana um, way of thinking um, that help us bring us closer to being in relationship with, and I know this is really confronting, right? Because I love to blame the system. I love to say it's the system's fault, the system's broken, the system doesn't listen, the system doesn't understand me, the system doesn't understand my people. But then at the same time, um, I am part and parcel of that system. But it's also kind of liberating, right? It's also kind of liberating that actually, um, if, I'm a, if I'm an inherent part of the thing I'm trying to change, there are things that I can do for influence, for levers, for, for, for shifts that are outside of me, but I can also do um, at smaller scale with me. So this has been a, um, a bit of a confronting thing when we um, kind of, when we want to indigenize a service or an operating model or a policy um, is that um, you know, so I'll take the Takana one, for example, like, right, so we're going to not just indigenize the, um, the service offer, um, but the space, the recruitment process, the PDs, um, the team structure, the, um, 
the induction, the, the everything, the how we, how we communicate, what the value, being led by values, being, you know, having manaki tanga at the heart of, and all these things. And the confronting thing was that actually there was heaps of institutional memory in me and in the team that we had to also detach from, let go of. And so much of that is linked to work identity around previous successes. Um, and then you start getting into that real confronting part of like, am I kukalan enough? You know, like, am I Māori enough? Um, um, holy heck, here I was trying to decolonize a space. Oh my God, I, my mind is decolonized. My, my mind is colonized. My heart is colonized. I'm holding a colonial memory. Um, and, you know, I don't, I don't want to send you all into an existential crisis or an um, identity crisis by the end of the morning. But even this idea of saying that the system is something over there that I can change, tweak, shift, influence is still buying into the colonial memory that we are all separate. So then, Baruch, how much time have I got? Surely 30 seconds. They'll all be in tears. They'll all be in tears now. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm just going to kind of get to uh, my final provocation. <laughs> You're like, what? There's more? Um, my final provocation, which is then... We started our conversation around sorry, is that still sharing? No. Sorry, share screen. How about that? Final uh, initial provocation was where where is the system comfortable with its start for change? And you know, uh, technology doesn't like me and I don't know what I'm doing. So let me just stop there. So the question is, here's a, here's a question. Here's a question. So we started with, what is the, start, what is the system's starting point for change? Um, and we'd have lots of examples there around the soft spots in the system. Um, and some real good provocation in the chat around, well, it's designed not to change, right? It's bureaucratically designed to hold the status quo. The question in the next, the next question I want to put to you is what's your starting point for change? And I'm talking about the intrapersonal, the intrapersonal part. And I don't want us to be like, oh my God, I have to go decolonize myself. Yeah, we do. <laughs> <laughs> we do, we all do. Um, but if the starting point for the system is here and my starting point for change is here, there's going to be a gap. So what do we do there? Like, I don't know. Like, I just kind of like, go, oh, God. So, you know, I think that's the, yeah, that's, that's the question. So if we have a somewhat understanding of where the start point for the systems changes, and through reflection, I can understand where my start point for change is, then how do we, how do we, how do we meet in the middle? What, what do we do in the gap? They're not separate because Modi is there, right? Modi is still connecting across, the VAR is still connecting across what we cannot see. But how do I bring my, 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 my start point and the system start point closer together? Baruch, over to you. Dickie, thank you very much for that and for that provocation. Um, I've put the question into the chat so what is your starting point for change what's the opportunity space in between your starting point and that of your system so again take about a minute i'll just start some music take about a minute to think about it and lee will magically put us into breakout rooms we'll have a bit of a conversation Kia ora. i'm going to take the reins back thank you so much and thank you for the rich dialogue that's happened on um that i can see popping down into um a chat um, so before we wrap up, to a tahi here no te tukua tu te mihi kia koe te plata tiki, uh, nei au e noho ana ki ngā wai o wai te mata, rere kauana ngā wai ki te moana nui i nga te hononga, i nga te hononga whakapapo o tō tāwa tūpuna, nei rā te mihi mauri ora nui kia koe rā, uh, ka kore tēnei puna e mimiti ana, uh, e kore tēnei puna aroha e mimiti ana kia koe e hoa, uh, thank you so much, Dickie. Um, on behalf of myself, um, 
Farouk and also Faya Lee um, from the Western Institute as well as the Southern Institute. It's been an absolute pleasure welcoming you into our shared space. But the biggest mahi also goes out to everyone that joined us today. Thank you for being brave enough and taking the time out, precious time out to join us in this space. Um, just as a reminder before we head out and just boost for the day, um, to be completely honest, I believe there's a myth out there that this is Hump Wednesday, but I felt anything but being in this space. Um, I'm going to be honest, um, Dickie, I felt quite provocative and quite confronting in a really good way with everything that you're sharing. And I felt the Modi rising with me um, and lots of questions um, come out of me. Um, thank you so much for your um, thought provoking kōrero and sharing with us today. Um, and as a reminder, before everyone stepped into this space, uh, we asked you one question coming into here, is how do we help the systems we work in to indigenize? Now, before I leave this place, space, to be honest, I have several questions on me, not answers, because I don't think this could be, um, we can find answers or resolutions in such a short time. But the beautiful thing, it's just beginning of our conversations, which is the main idea of coming into our foundation series, is having like-minded people across all Aotearoa connecting and sharing um, to have that whakawhanaunga tanga, um, to feel the modi, which I'll take from the word today, having that beautiful modi um, atu and the modi mai in a really safe space, which is contained within here, flowing amongst us in such a beautiful, strength-based and positive way. Um, so before you step out, I'm going to add to those provocations and leave everyone with questions until we connect it again. So it's a great thing, but there's more. But for now, I love what Dickie brought up there in terms of the illusion that I am part of the colonial system over there. I've seen yourself as separated and apart um, from the colonial system. The second thought I would um, also want to put in as a reminder is what he shared there, everything has a modi. Even the system, even the phone, um, everything around you, even yourself has a modi, it has a modi that flows out and it flows inwards. Um, so therefore it has an energy, it has a spirit, it has a flow within it that you have within yourself and what you engage with, that you have the power to shift or to influence, even albeit it be in a small way, it could just be your simple way of being in a hui, holding yourself with mana and doing it with a smile. But there are definitely ways that you can use your modi and share that modi and let it flow out into the system. Um, I love that other um, provocation that we talked about the colonial memory. So that's my question back to everyone. How much, and we're so resistant. It's not resistant, I don't think it's the right word, but we're thinking of the system in a part. And there's a reminder there what Dickie brought up of the colonial memory. So therein lies my question to everyone. How much of that colonial memory is still sitting within you in terms of telling you or making you believe that you cannot change the system? If you have to step back to what you name you, what you know, already know within yourself and, to, and that interpersonal look into what you can control and your power of influence that you naturally have within yourself before we get sucked up into the illusion. There's this big, massive system. I, like Dickie said, that's like a big, massive wall for many of us. But what I love with what Dickie brought today, uh, what happens if we step back to the Modi, there are manageable ways we do have the tools where we can start making those influence. It is not a dead end story or it's too hard. It is hard, but it's still doable if we have the heart, right hearts, right minds, and right connected to the right people to make that change. Um, and the last thing before you step out, I ask, just again, keep conscious, keep consciousness of what your modi atu and modi mai is when you're stepping out into the, um, um, out of this space and what that looks like. So without without further ado, right on time. Kia tukuna tēnei kōrero katoa i rongi ngā ararau o tāwhiri mātia ka rere katū kātou mari ora ki a tātou katoa. Be safe out there, Fano, until we connect next time. Namhikia koutou.